Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Blessings, blessings, blessings unto you today. Blessings unto you this today. Uh, let me um, tag a few people. Just give me a moment. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. Um, welcome again. Uh, we, I spoke about uh, narcissism maybe about a week or so ago, and um, I was kind of waiting to see what God wanted me to do about talking about it again, and um, I feel like this is the time to, to, to get back to talking about it again. Please share the broadcast so someone can get some help. Share the broadcast um, so someone can be set free and deliver. Uh, please share, please share, please share. Um, I'm going to just go over just a few things, um, about narcissists, but first I just want to know how everybody's doing. How you guys doing? How is your day today? How's things going? We know that this pandemic is, is, is just causing us to be at home, but God, you know, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. And, and, and I thank God that even though we're being at home, we're getting closer to the Lord because that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to get closer to him. And, and that's something that God wants us to do. Um, I just thank God for each and every one of you. I just want to say a, a prayer. Um, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would just touch even one that's in this group right now that's coming to the live. I pray that you touch them, Lord. I pray that a word has been said, Father, will be said that's going to uh, touch their heart, that's going to bring deliverance, that's going to bring a sound mind, that's going to bring peace, Father God, that's going to bring an awareness, Father God, of a narcissist, Lord, and how to, dis how to disarm a narcissist, how to deal with a narcissist, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. And I just thank you right now for each and every person that's on here. I pray that you bless them, keep them, protect them, Father God. In the name of Jesus, I plead the blood of Jesus right now. I thank you, Father, that you will use me as you please, Father God, that your words that, that come out of my mouth will be only of the Holy Spirit, only of you, Father God. In the name of Jesus, take control and take over me, Father God. In Jesus' holy name, amen. amen. So we were talking about a narcissist before, and so um, uh, the definitions of a narcissist, I'm just going to go um, through it just really quick. The definitions of a narcissist is the meaning of the meaning of a narcissist is a person who is overly self-involved and often vain and selfish. A person who suffers from narcissism, deriving erratically gratifications from admiration of their own physical, mental attributes. So that's the this is the meaning of a narcissist that they're they're just selfish. They're vain. It's just all about them. It, it, you know. They don't care about nobody else. It's, it's, it's all about them. It has to be about them. And the last time I was speaking about this, it was a lot of it's a lot of people that's that 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 works in that. They just that's what they do. They just they're narcissists. They want they they want to get gratification. It's all about them. Desire to be admired. Unable to take criticism. And narcissism are usually extreme sensitive in this, uh, and this makes nar narcissistic leaders particularly sensitive to harsh criticism. They are uh, unable to take criticism constructively, constructively, and brought over it endlessly. They cannot tolerate slights or descending opinions, and can be quite abrasive with those dare voice a negative opinion. They can't take negative criticism. Narcissist, and then we have in, 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 inability to listen. Narcissistic leaders are not good listeners. So don't go take, uh, talking to them about a vexing problem, this disinterest this, this and listening, oh God, presumably develops a defense mechanism to keep them from acknowledging criticism. Narcissistic leaders also believe that stubbornness, stubbornness, stubbornness do not have much to contribute. And their opinions need not to be taken serious. 
Okay, that right there, that's serious right there. Because here, here we got leaders. This is a leader now. You're coming to a leader and you're talking to a leader and you're letting the leader know that there's some problems and, and you have some issues in there. They're basically telling you they don't want to hear it. So now you're a leader. You're supposed to be able to, to, to listen to what, I, you know, the person has to say. And you're supposed to be able to help that person get through whatever issues they're having. But an inability to listen. A narcissistic leader is un, it, has, it has no ability to listen to what a person has got going on. And then we have relationships. Healthy narcissistic behavior involves the real concern for other people. And this type of leader does not devalue the opinions, ideas of other people. On the other hand, leaders exhibiting destructive narcissistic behavior may not hesitate to devalue or humiliate others with no sense of remorse. Now, come on now. Now, now some of this stuff I'm, I'm reading, I done been through some of this stuff right here. Right here. This some of this stuff I've been through right here, right here. You know, where 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 we gotta talk about it because it does exist. We gotta talk about it because God wants us to know that there is this spirit out here in this land. We have this spirit that's out here doing these things and being narcissist narcissists and, and doing things that they shouldn't do. And we got leaders doing that. And then we have consistency. And if the leader has a healthy level of nar narciss narcissism, they will have a set of values, the ability to follow a consistent path, and will usually follow through, pl through plans. When nar narcissism turns destructive, you will get a leader who has no values, is fickle and changes direction often, and is easily bored. My God, Jesus. My God, Jesus. So, we're going to take a minute just to just, just, just think. Have you been in a, in a situation like this? Have you been in, in a narcissistic uh, church or a building or been know a, a person who's, who does that? Leader who has no value or is fickle and changes direction often and is easily bored. Empire building. A narcissistic leader wants to take over the world and create an empire. They want to leave behind a large then life legacy and therefore activity seeks to expand their their sphere their, their, their sphere of influences. Hire more subordinates or increase their reach and authority within the organization. And our sister entrepreneur will keep building one company after another. My God. Lack of empathy. Why they crave for empathy. And understanding from others, narcissists themselves are not the most uh, empathetic people. Some of those charismatic and successful nar narcissists are not known for empathy. This lack of empathy can usually be a strength in times of close and uh, rational change because they are not bogged down by feelings and emotions and demands of their employees. So they, they give order. They, they have no emotions. They just want to tell you what to do. They want to, they know, they're very competitive. They want to comp be, always be comp competing, you know, pursuing everything. Everything is about them. Everything is about them. Everything is about them. And they're not good with mentoring. Since they have no empathy and are also extreme self-reliant, it is very difficult for a narcissistic leader to mentor somebody or be, re be mentored. When they do mentor, they instruct rather than coach and try to make their uh, uh, pro pro projects out to be smaller than pillar versions of themselves. So basic prodigies. So basically you become, you know, they, they don't want you to be bigger than them. No matter what, you, you, you're going to always stay beneath them because they are not just a narcissistic spirit. They want you to stay beneath them. So, you know, I wanted to share that part about what a, nar a narcissistic does. And I know that some of us have been in relationships where we've been involved with narcissistic people, whether they're you're being your friends, relationship, whatever it is. We know that we've been involved in, with people like that. 
So basically what we need to start doing is to ask God for direction, ask God for wisdom, ask God for discernment. So we know not to be dealing with these type of people. Because if you get caught up in this situation, it's sometimes really hard to get out of this situation. Because that person is going to constantly make you feel like if you leave them, there's, you know, you, you can't leave them or don't leave them or, you know, don't do this and don't do that. Because that's what they are. They want, they, want all, they want all the attention on them. That's what they want. They want the attention on them. Okay, Proverbs 17.22 say, A joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. And most of the times what a, a narcissistic person does is try to break you down. Try to break you down, try to make you feel like you, you know, you're nothing. And this goes for relationships. This goes for relationships where women and men are in relationships. And, and one person is trying to make the other person feel like they're nothing. That they don't mean anything. They're, they're, they're better than them. And that's not true. Because we all are a child of God. We all belong to Jesus. And we shouldn't be made to feel that way. But, but people like to make you feel like that. Because, you know, they want to be gratified. Okay, so I just wanted to kind of share a little bit about that part. About uh, uh, um, the narcissism. How to disarm a narcissism. We're going to get back to that in a little bit. But... Today, when I was um, out, I was walking my um, my dog earlier, my my pit, and uh, I was just walking, in, and and God uh, was speaking to me, and He wanted me to tell the people of God. He wanted He told me He said, "Tell my people how much I love them. Tell my people how much I love them. Tell my people how much I care about them. Tell my people how much I I adore them." And, I, and I'm concerned about every situation, every situation that they're involved in, everything that they're doing, everything that they're touching, everything, everything that hurts them. He, 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 he wants you to know that he's concerned about it. He's very, very concerned about it. He's concerned about your worries. He doesn't want you to worry about things. He wants you to bring it to him. But today he really was dealing with me about that. He was telling me that he wants... You know, I wanted to talk about narcissism a little bit, but I want to tell you that God really, really loves you. And he wants you to know that he loves you and he really cares about you. And he doesn't want you to walk around here with your head down. He doesn't want you to walk around here being abused and misused either. He wants you to take a stand. He wants you to take a stand and not walk around here allowing people to just do whatever they do with you. Just because you're a Christian, people say, well, you're a Christian. You shouldn't be doing this and you shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't be saying that. But you're not a, you're not a, 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 a doormat either. Don't be a doormat. Don't be a doormat for no one because you're not a doormat. We're to love people, but we also to also want respect too. You know, I, I'm just gonna keep it 100. I'm a, I'm, I'm a pastor. I'm a prophet. But don't, don't get it twisted. Don't, don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. I'm real. Don't get it twisted. You, you, you know, don't, don't get it twisted. Because a lot of people say, oh, she's a Christian and she's a this, she's a that. Yeah, but I'm a human being too. And I, and, and if you cut me, I'm a bleed. So we gotta be careful how we treat people. We gotta be careful how we, how we, 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 we do one another. We gotta be careful how, how we. Talk to one another. We got to be careful with this jealous spirit because jealousy is cooler than a grave. And jealousy is something that's really, really, really in the church right now. And, and it doesn't make any sense because we're all gifted in different areas. We all gifted. We all have a gift. We're all gifted. All of our gifts are different. All of our gifts is be, be going to be used to those that we need to reach. I may, I, I have people I can reach that you can't reach. I, and you have people that you can reach that I will never reach. I'm just going to be honest. I'm going to tell you right now. I, I can never go to a convalescent home. You can never take me to a convalescent home. I can't do that. That's not, I can't. I'm sorry. I, I tried. I went in there and I ran out. You know, I can't do it. It's going to take an act of God for me to go into convalescent home. I'm telling you. So see, that I can't do that. But maybe you can do that. Now, I can go into the prisons. 
I can go out in the streets and evangelize. I can do all those things. Those things right there, I can do that. You know, I, I like the hard stuff. I like to deal with, with people that, 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 that's hard. You know, I, 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 if I have to go to the hospital and pray for a sick person, excuse me, <coughs> I'll be glad to do that. But a convalescent home, I can't do it, y'all. I just can't do it. I think I ran halfway and I was like, oh, I was sick. I had to run out. So that ain't my call. But then there's people right here online that can do that. And that's beautiful. I, I, I admire that. I admire people that can do that, can work with, with, with the elderly and stuff like that. I'm just not one of them. But, uh, you know, but God loves, love, wanted me to tell you guys how much he loves you. He really, really loves you. And then he also told me he wanted me to uh, pray a decree over the people of God. He did. He wanted me to pray a decree over the people of God. I didn't come on here to stay here very long. I just want to kind of brush up a little bit on a, a narcissist, how we have to really, like, be careful. The people that we bring in to our homes, we got to be careful. The people that we surround ourselves with, we got to be careful. Women, young women, young women and young men, you got to be careful that you out here just having sex with just anybody and saying, you know, just because. That is not safe. Okay, it's not safe. It's not safe. A lot of young people are out here doing things they shouldn't do. And then you get emotionally attached to a person. And then when you get emotionally attached to this person, you want to uh, 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 kill yourself. The Lord said there's a lot of suicide going on, a lot of depression. And God, he, he doesn't want that. Know that he has someone for everyone. He wants you to be patient. He wants to heal you first before he can send anybody in your life to love you. First of all, you got to love yourself. If you can't love yourself, you can't expect God to send somebody to come and fix you. You got to fix you first. Because, I mean, two people, when you when two people come together, they both have to be whole. One is not whole and the other, the other one is. How's that going to work? That's not going to work. You have to be made whole. Oh, well, she's fine. She look good. I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk to her. And then what you do, you talk to her. Then y'all turn around. Y'all go. Y'all do the, 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 do, the do. And then, and then you, you, you think that's your husband. That's going to be my husband. That's going to be my husband. Because it's a lot of that in the church. That's my husband. That's my husband. And then you mess around and you go and have sex with him because you think that's your husband. And then two, three weeks later, a month later, he ain't nowhere to be found. So you don't have sex with somebody in the church and this is going on in the house of God. Women of God and men of God are fornicating in the house of God. And then get mad at God when God when when the relationship don't work out. Well, nobody told you to sleep with them. The God, God didn't tell you to fornicate. That's the spirit of lust. Get that lust out. Get it out. Get the lust out of your life because that, that lust will have you doing things that you thought you would never do. That lust will have you doing threesomes. That lust will have you doing all kinds of stuff. Because a narcissist will tell you, oh, I, I, you know, since, you know, I love you, but I need you to bring another partner in the bed. Oh, oh no, 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 we don't, we don't do that. We don't do that. We got married couples uh, that's, that's, that's sitting there and compromising their relationship when you should just be praying and asking God what to do. Compromising. If you know you've done everything you're supposed to do as a, as a husband or a wife and the person don't want to be with you or they just want to do what they want to do, I'm not telling you to leave them, but I'm telling you get on your knees and get to praying and fasting. Get on your knees. If you if God put two, those two people together, you get on your knees and you pray. And a lot of times, I'm going to say this, that I hear God saying, we always want to listen to what everybody else got to say. And then we listen to them, and then we all confused because God done told us what to do, but then you got to go to somebody and somebody telling you this and that. And then now you all confused. You don't know what's going on. You here and there. You everywhere. You everywhere. Not knowing what to do. Because you ain't listening to God, you're listening to people. You're listening to people. And the problem is, is that when you do that, you end up getting, you end up being worse than, than, than you was before. And God doesn't want 
that to be keep going on in the body of Christ. Jesus is coming back. And we sitting over here just thinking it's, 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 he's not coming, but he's coming. He really is coming. But people have been saying this so long that everybody don't believe it. But I'm telling you, when that, when that sky cracked, please don't be crying. I have a sip on that. Please don't be crying. Because you're hearing the word of God right now. You're hearing the word of God right now. God is saying, come unto me and be saved. Turn from your wicked ways. Humble yourself and pray. Seek my face. He's telling you right now. But you say, no, I ain't got time. I still want to take a little sippy sip. I still want to do a little dippy dip. I still gotta go. I still got a little. I still. I still want to go to the nightclub a little bit. I still want to. Uh, I still want to check out this girl right here. I ain't, I ain't had a chance to get this girl yet. I tell you what, five minutes of pleasure is gonna take you a lifetime of hell. Because I'm telling you, Jesus is coming. And we got to get it together. He, ble he loves his people. He wants his people blessed. He wants us blessed. He wants us to, to, to recognize what we're dealing with, with this narcissism, trying to gratify, trying to be, you know, trying to be all this and that and, 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 and not acknowledging his people, just throwing his people out like, like garbage. God is not pleased with that. He is not pleased with that. And if you're a leader and you're doing this, I admonish you to stop. I admonish you to, to seek the Lord and get yourself together. Because God ain't playing this in 20, uh, 2021. This ain't the day. This ain't the time to be playing. God is serious about what, what about his, his, his uh, relationship with his people. All this stuff that's going on, this pandemic and all this stuff that's going on. I think y'all need to read Exodus because I believe this pandemic and this COVID-19 is, is, is nothing but a plague. Read Exodus about all them plagues. When them plagues came, them, 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 them kids died, didn't they? They said, put the blood on your door because when that fall comes, people are going to die. Right? And, when, and what they do, when they put the blood on the door... The, those that were saved, nothing happened to them. But those that wasn't saved, they all end up dying. So we we walking around here talking about, uh, you know, there's no COVID-19. And yeah, it's not real. It's not that. And then you find yourself in the hospital. And then you find yourself in a bad situation because you don't want to believe nothing. But you don't read your Bible so you can understand what's really going on. It's a plague. I don't care what nobody. It's a plague. A plague. And it's causing fear. And when fear comes, fear brings destruction. Because when you're fearful, you're going to believe you're just, gonna, you're just scared. Oh, my God, I'm going to catch COVID. You keep saying that, and you're going to catch it for real. But, see, I ain't going to catch no COVID. I don't care what you say. I'm under the blood of Jesus. And as long as I'm wearing that mask and keeping my uh, sanitizer and keeping my uh, Lysol spray and spraying wherever I go and do what I need to do, I'm not going to catch no COVID. And I wish people stopped saying COVID is dangerous. COVID, yeah, it is dangerous. We know it's dangerous, but stop speaking those things. Because what out of your mouth is whatever you're speaking out of your mouth, that's what you're going to get. If you keep saying you're poor, that's what you're going to be. You're going to be poor. But the last time I checked, the Lord is our shepherd. He shall not want. The last time I checked, cattle on the thousand hill belong to him. The last time I checked, we're the apple of his eyes. The last time I checked, he said, seek, if you ask me and believe what you ask me for, I will give it to you. So if you keep asking and you're not getting it, you might want to check your unbelief. Your unbelief might want to be checked. Because God doesn't lie. He's, whatever he promised, he's going to do it. Whatever he say he's going to do, he's going to do it. He doesn't lie. That's not what he does. He's not a liar. He's not a man that he should lie. Or the son of man that he shall have to repent. You know, and I know there's not a lot of people on this live and it's okay. Because those that are here, are those are the ones that want, God wants me to uh, bless with this decree. Because he told me before I even left my house, I need you to decree blessings over my people. He gave me what to do, what to say, and what to, what to not do. So that's why I can't spend a whole lot of time with the narcissist. He just told me to speak a little bit about it, go over it a little bit. But the main thing is he wants his people blessed. He wants his people blessed. 
He wants his people blessed. And he's going to do just what he said he's going to do for us. He doesn't lie. He can't. He can't lie. But we so busy worrying about what we don't have. But have y'all been downtown lately? Our folks down there are in the streets, living in, in tents, living in boxes. You know, and we complain about the most dumbest stuff. We do. I'm serious. I learned. I learned the hard way. I don't, I don't complain. I, I really don't really complain no more. I'll be like, Lord, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to tell you, if you obey God and you just walk up rightly before him, he will pour you out a blessing that you will not have enough room to receive. And I'm going to tell you, I've been blessed beyond, blessed, beyond, blessed, beyond, blessed. I'm telling you right now. I'm not bragging, y'all. I'm not bragging. I'm not trying to do none of that. I, I'm not. I just want you to understand that if you just obey God and live a righteous, holy life, that he will bless you. And it doesn't have to be always financially. It could be monetary things. It could be things that he, he'll do for you just because. Because he's that kind of a God. He's a good God. He has blessed me to the point where I got so much food in my house, it don't even make no sense. It don't even make no sense. I don't even know what to eat. Because there's so much to eat. You know? I'm just going to be real. And I know it came from being obedient. Because when I was disobedient, I was struggling every single day. Disobedience will get you nothing. Obedience is better than sacrifice. That's what the word of God says. So when you're disobedient and not obeying God, then you're, you know, you're causing these, these things to come upon your own self. Because you're not obeying him. And he's very simple. He wants you to obey when he tells you to tell somebody something. Somebody's life can be at stake. And we hold him back. Somebody's life can be at stake. He might be telling you to pray for somebody. You won't do it. Why? Because why? You won't pray for them. Oh, because you're tired. You're sleepy. you this and you that. All he wants you to do is just pray. Just cover somebody under the blood of Jesus. People are dying every single day. We complain about all kinds of stuff. But when was the last time anybody drove past a hospital and stopped and put and, 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 and stretch out your hand and, 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 and cursed every COVID-19 sickness that's in that hospital? Because he given us power. Greater work shall we do. That's what he said. He said, greater work shall you do. He left the power and, the, and here. So what it is, is we don't believe we have that power. We don't believe it. We don't believe we're supposed to be wealthy. We don't believe we're not supposed to be sick. We don't believe that we have this power. Because if we believe it, people shouldn't be sick right now. Why? Because the power is in. We got the power. We have it. We have the power. What else do he, can he come and do? He already died. He already died and bled on the cross. Left this Holy Spirit, left everything for us, and we still complaining and not believing him. And then we talk about, oh, everybody's dying. Yeah, everybody's dying because you're not doing your part. Because you're scared too. You're scared to go out in the street because you're scared you're going to catch COVID when God already covered you with the blood of Jesus. And I'm not telling you not to use wisdom, but what I'm telling you, there's hospitals full of people that are sick. And you don't have to go in the hospital, but you can lay... I feel the Holy Ghost. You can stretch out your hand and speak life into those people. Because we're in a time of miracle signs and wonders. This is the time that we're living in. And sometimes it's not going to come right away. And then if, and I'm going to tell you something else that for you not to get to discouraged. And if you do pray for someone and they pass away, don't be discouraged. Because that's what God wanted. Because he's in control, right? So if you pray for someone and they pass away, it is their time to go be with the Lord. It's their time. I had a dream a couple of, I say about two months ago, I had this dream. And I can share the dream now because now I understand the Lord revealed to me the other day what the dream was about. I had a dream that I was in this big mansion. This big mansion was huge. My mom was there and there was a lot of other people there, like workers, workers, people were working. My dad was there. My dad's passed away, but my dad was there. But I kept saying, mom, 
Why are you washing so many sheets? There were so many sheets. I see so many white sheets. I just couldn't count. The, it was loads and loads of white sheets. It was loads and loads and loads. And, and they just kept on washing them. And they just kept on washing them. And there was more piling up and more piling up. It was piles of white sheets. And the Lord revealed it to me the other day. These deaths that are coming, God said he was already, he, he, showed me the, he showed me the dream before the deaths came. At the time, I didn't understand the dream. I just didn't understand. I just knew that there was a lot of sheets. There were a lot of white, pure white sheets. And then now the Lord brought to my, brought back to my remembers. Those sheets were people that were going to be dying. And all of those sheets were pure white. So I don't know if some of them were saved or not saved, but I seen so many white sheets that were being prepared for the deaths of the people, the, the thousands of people that are dead right now. So we got to pray, y'all. You know, we complaining about little stuff. We complaining about why? Okay, we complain about rent and all this stuff and the light bill and all this stuff. Why wouldn't God help you pay your light bill? Why? Because you're looking for the money to come one way or another. God, God can do it any way he wants to. He can, he can touch the electric company and clear your whole account. Clear it from the name of Jesus. And if he don't clear it, he's going to help you pay it. And if he don't clear it and help you pay it, he's going to help you make arrangements. But we complain about the smallest things. And we got people out there, homeless, families with kids, and all kinds of stuff. All kinds of stuff going on out here. And we won't take the time because we're so worried about COVID. We're worried about COVID. COVID is going to kill us. COVID is going to kill us because we're speaking that all the time. Oh, I got this, so I can't go out there. I got this, and I can't go out there. But you can get in your car, like I said. You can get in your car, and you can stay in your car with your mask on, and you can stretch out your hand to the homeless. You can stretch out your hand to the hospitals. You can go to drive around to these prisons and stretch out your hand. God wants his people delivered. Or if it's, if, if, if it's that serious that you can't do the driving, just get on your knees. Get on your knees. And speak life to these people in the prisons, to these people in the hospital. You don't have to know them. But I can tell you God loved him because he told me today he loves his people. He said he, is, he loves them, he cares about them, and he doesn't want to see them lost. And I cannot get that out of my mind. He told me that today. I love my people, and I don't want my people lost. Tell them I love them. Tell them I cherish them. Tell them I care about every situation that they're dealing with. Tell them how much they are, how important they are to me. We got to do better, y'all. We got to do better. And I'm, I'm talking to myself, too. We got to do better. We got to do better because people are dying every day. Yes, they are. But if we could start speaking the life to these people because God left the power to us. You know, one can chase a thousand, two can chase ten thousand. We got to get together and become one. We got to stop bickering and fighting and being jealous of one another over gifts. That the gifts ain't even yours. It's the Lord's. It ain't even you. It's God. And you fighting over it. Copycatting other people. You see somebody doing good, then you go and copycat them. Are you a, are you a copy carb? Are you a carbon copy? Are you original? Because there ain't no, there's not another one of me. I'm original, and I don't care what you do. You will never find another one like me. You may find somebody that might look like me, but they will never have my DNA. And they're not gonna have your DNA. God made you beautiful. He made you beautiful and wonderful, wonderfully made you for, for, for particular people to, for you to reach. He did that. He did that. Stop letting people manipulate you. Stop letting people tell you this and that and, and stuff. Because God's saying if you keep doing that, you're not listening to me. If God tell you to hold on and wait, then hold on and wait. If God say he's going to set you free, then... And if you're going through a struggle in your life, because we all got struggles, y'all. We all got struggles. We all got struggles. We all got things we're dealing with. We all got things we're fighting in our flesh. We're going we to fight in our flesh till Jesus comes. Period. Don't beat yourself up over it. Get it together and keep it moving. 
It don't make no sense. I'm not here to, 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 to try to chastise nobody because that ain't my job. But I'm just telling you what God is saying. God is saying we need to be praying. We need to pray. And a lot of us are not praying like he's telling us to do. We're too busy worrying about, oh, this person and that person. If you already pray for a, circuit, a situation, and it's already been perfect. God said, I already fixed that. You need to move on to the next thing. You keep going back to the same situation I already fixed. So either you believe me or you don't believe me. Every time something jump off, you go right back to the same thing again. God said you're being, you, you don't, don't be stuck again. 20, 2021 ain't the, ain't the time to be stuck. You got to move forward. Move forward, God says. I move forward. And I hear God, God saying, you know, we complain too much. About things that are not important. We complain about things that don't matter. We have children being abused out here. We got all kinds of stuff going on. And we can't all we all we pray about is our family members. All we pray about is what's what what Jack did yesterday and what Susie done and Susie's not delivered. She's on drugs and she don't this and this. Okay, you already prayed about that. God already fixed that. God already fixed that. He said, your whole house shall be saved, right? He said, if you save your whole house, going to be saved. He said, he's going to save your whole household. So if he's going to save your whole household, there's no need for you to, uh, you know, to be, be, be uh, tripping or nothing. Don't trip. There's no, 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 no reason for you to trip up about anything. He already fixed that. We, we, God wants our focus to be uh, on the things that need to be focused on. There are people that don't know Jesus, y'all. There's people out here that don't know, don't know him. We think that they heard, that they know God, but they don't. Some people haven't even heard about Jesus. They haven't. And, and, and then some of them don't understand. Some of them are confused. Why? Because some of, because church people can have confused them. Because we live any kind of way. We live the same way they live. And they looking at us like, what's going on? Like, you know, why do I need to go to church? I don't need to go to church if I'm going, if I, if I could live like that too. I don't have to go to church. You know, we could do, I could do whatever I want to do and still go to church and, 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 and on, on Easter. I'm going to tell you something. Just because you go to church one day out of the year don't mean that anything going to happen for you. Don't go to, because I notice a lot every year on Easter, everybody want to get dressed up. Everybody want to talk about Easter, Jesus risen from the dead and all this stuff. But you know what? That's great. That's lovely. That's wonderful. But we need to have a delivery service on Easter. That's what we need to do, a deliverance service. Because every year we talk about the same thing. Jesus re resurrect three days from them. We know that we, we, we done heard that so much. It's already embedded in our head. We know that. We know that already. So why are we still doing that over and over again? You know, I'm not telling you what to do whatever you want to do. But to me... On Easter, you should have a deliverance day. You should, fast, you should fast and pray, have your tea, fast and pray, and have a deliverance. Because everybody comes to church on Easter Sunday, don't they? Have a deliverance. Because all we talk about is the same thing. They come in there, they come in there like a wet dog and leave a, they leave a wet dog. They come in there unsaved and leave unsaved. It doesn't do no good. What, they come in there and feel good for one day? Come on, man. This is ridiculous. We, this, we, 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 too, we caught up in religion. We, we become religious. We become religious and we, we follow the, the, the seasons. and We follow everything that's done and, and all of this stuff. But I'm telling you, we need to have a deliverance deliverance on Easter Sunday because that's when everybody who's not serving the Lord feels that that's the day that they need to come to they need to come to church I know God ain't telling everybody to talk about uh the resurrection of Jesus I know he ain't because you know why because we've been hearing this for years and years and two hundred and three thousand and 200,000 years. We hear the same thing every single Easter. 
And we worried about, about talking about that all the time. But how about, let's talk about the power of God. Let's talk about the power of God saving and delivering. How, let's talk about that. Let's, let's get the people in. And yeah, you, you, you want to mention about the resurrection, do that. But let's talk about Jesus, how he loves them and how he want to see, set them, want to see them set free. Cause that's what it's about. It's about them being set free. You know that that's the only time they're going to come to church. Be ready. Steadfast. Fast it up. Pray it up. Put your arms around one of them. You never know. You know what they're going through. Suicide, depression. You know, I, 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 you, we don't know what they're going through. So we 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 gotta we gotta we gotta stop this religion. I hear God saying this this religion going. He, he said 2021 is some things gonna change. Either they're gonna change or he's gonna shut some stuff down. Because no more religion. People are dying by the dozen. People are dying by the millions and thousands and thousands. And all we can do is worry about uh, 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 the bunny and and some food. And souls are coming in and going out the same way they came in. And that ain't what that ain't what God wants. That, that that's not acceptable in His sight. He doesn't want it. He's not happy about it, and we need to get it together. Because if we don't get it together, the blood is going to be in our hands. Because I'm going to tell you something right now. The people that God sent to you, and you don't minister to them, and you don't say nothing to them, and you don't, you don't speak to them or nothing like that, the blood is going to be in your hands. It's going to be in your hands. It's going to be on your hands. Why? Because you know better. We know better. We don't have no more excuses. Okay? We don't have no more excuses. I don't have no more excuses. I done did all I I, I done been in, I done been to the nightclubs. I done drank. I done fornicated. I done did all that. But when God calls you and pulls you out and tell you that's it, that's it, and you still keep going and doing that, then you're just you you're you're you're, you're just saying, okay, Lord, I'm not gonna obey you. And uh, when God tell you, if you don't stop doing what you're doing, I'm going to take you out of here. Because there's a lot of gifted people. There's a lot of gifted people, but you, 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 you're not, you, you, you gifted because the Bible says, give come without repentance. So yes, you're gifted, but who are you going to set free? Who are you going to set free? You talk about the Lord, but then you live any kind of way. You go and live the same way you, you, you want to live. You think that because you do good things, that's going to take you to heaven, and it's not. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but a good work's not going to get you in heaven. It's not going to happen. It ain't going to help you get to heaven. That's not going to help you get to heaven. It's not. God is just not going to allow that. It says, let uh, 1 Corinthians 3 and 18, Let no one deceive himself if anyone among you think that he is wise in his age. Let him become a fool that he may become wise. Matthew 10, 37. Whosoever loves his father or his mother more than he is not worthy of me. And whosoever loves his son or his daughter more than me is not worthy of me. 2 Timothy 1 and 7. For God gave us a spirit, a spirit not of fear, but power, love, and, and self-control. And Daniel, let's talk about Daniel. Daniel 4, 28 to 31, which says, the, And all this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar at the end of 12 months. He was walking on the roof of the royal palace of Balon. And the king answered and said, It is not this great Balon which I have built by my mighty power as a royal royal residence and for the glory of my majesty while the words are still in the king's mouth there fell a voice from heaven O king Nebuchadnezzar to you it is spoken the king has departed from you now what God is saying you you, you want him to depart from because God will depart from people he will depart from you and when he depart from you there's nothing when you don't have God you're empty Without God, there's a very, is an emptiness. So empty is an emptiness. 
John 3 and 30 says he must increase, but I must decrease. So we must decrease so God can increase in us. We need to seek the things above. We're Colossians 3, 1 and 25. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ and God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you all will also appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you. Sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desires, and covenants, which is idolatry. We got to put away some things. We got to put away some things. We got to put away some things. We got to put away some things because God is not, he's not pleased with a lot of things that's going on. You know, it's not, he's not. We make an image, we, we make it, uh, uh, we got idols. We got idols. Daniel 3, 1 through 30 says, and, Nath and King Nazarchadeva made an image of gold whose height was 60 cubits and it uh, beareth six cubits. He set it up on the plain of Dora in the Providence of Bayon. The king Nazareth sent together the, the set traps and the uh, per, uh, perfects of the governors and the counselors and the treasures, the justice and the majestics and all of the officials of the Providence to come to the dedication of the image that king Nazareth has set up. Then the set traps the perfect perfects the governors and the counselors and the treasures of the justice, the majestic and all the officials of the providence gather for the dedication of the image it has set up. Cause I can hear it. And they stood before the image. Nazareth never had set up. And then the herald be proclaimed aloud. You are commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, Lord, tigon, harp, bedpipe, and every kind of music, you are to fall down and worship the golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. So what y'all bowing down the people that, you know, we can't be bowing down the people, bowing down the images. But that's what we're doing when, when we're not listening to God and obeying God. We, we, we over here bowing down the people, afraid to speak up, knowing things are wrong. And I'm not saying that you got to speak up all the time. Sometimes God wants you to pray. But there's a lot of times he tell people to speak up and you're afraid. So they're going to kick you out of the church. Oh, well, tell them bye. Because you know why? Because you want to please God, right? Do you want to please God or do you want to please man? Because if you please man, it ain't going to help you. It ain't going to help you. But God is a good God, and I hope that you got something out of this. How to disarm a narcissist. Um, I think I gave you a little, oh, let me see. How to disarm a narcissist. I'll give you a little bit of that. And then I'm going to um, read this decree over, over the people of God that he told me to do. And then I think we shall be done unless he gives me a word for anybody. And then I'll, I'll do that if he, if he takes me there. But, um. Okay, so to disarm, how to change the pattern of a of a narcissist? You know, you 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 uh, the feeling that you are bad and fear or not good enough. Uh, the concern that if others saw the real you, they would find you unlovable and unworthy and reject you. This hot button often shows up as a a hyper 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 sense activity to feed back of criticism and security around others. This is the type of stuff that a, a narcissist will use. Abandonment, you know, the, the persevere of fear because you're afraid to be abandoned. So, so you'll put up with a narcissist because you don't want to be ashamed. You don't want to feel like you're by yourself. You don't want to feel unworthy because that's what they make you feel like. You don't want to be abandoned negatively. You don't want to be a negative, you know, uh, uh, view the things that are wrong with the, the world of your life. So, so what they do is they make you feel like you, you there's, there's so many things going wrong with you. 
the, uh, the, uh, the belief that life is full of pain and disappointment and betrayal because this is what a narcissist does. self sacrifice you self-sacrificing yourself. Don't do it. And we got women doing that every day. And then you 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 doing this and and your kids are going without things because you you want to please this narcissist. You know God wants you to be loved. He don't want you to be abused like that. This is an this is abuse. If you are living with a relationship with a narcissist, you have several choices. You can end the relationship, stick with the status quo, or learn and practice new healthier ways of communicating. As you probably guessed, the third option does require a great deal of energy and commitment because that is the fact that we as human beings are capable of change. You got to want change. If you don't want change, you're going to stay in that narcissism uh, 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 relationship where the person is going to continually to beat you down, tell you you ain't good enough and all of this and this and this and that. And that's an abusive relationship and God doesn't want not a man in it and not a woman in it. Because it's not just women that's being abused, it's men being abused too. And when a man is abusing you mentally, it's just as, it's just as bad as him beating you. Because mental abuse is worse than, a, than, than someone putting their hands on you. That's worse. So, what I want to say is, I hope this helped you a little bit about a narcissist. You know, uh, I hope it does something, you know, make you think about who you're with and what you're dealing with. You know, your concerns about, just, just check it out. If you don't believe me, pull it up. You can pull it up, go to Google, pull up a narcissist, read about it, you know, read about it, study on it, so you can know what to do if you're in that situation. Because we are not to be in that situation. God don't want us in that situation. He doesn't want us in that situation. So, bless you guys. I love you guys. I'm going to read this. Um, this the, the blessing that God told me to read over you guys. Because he keeps bringing that back. I know I got to do this. Uh, uh, he told me to pray a blessing over the people of God. Some declarations he wants me to, to say over you. And I pray this is a blessing to you. I pray that you receive something out of this word that I spoke. I just thank God for what he's doing. I thank God for using me. I thank God for, uh, I just want to, I'm just humble because he could have used anybody. It didn't have to be me. It could have been anybody. God can use a donkey. He can use uh, anything he wants. So I, 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 I honor him and I thank him for even thinking of me and using me. Okay. Because we have to learn how to stand up for ourselves as women. We are putting up with a lot of things that we shouldn't be putting up with. Love doesn't hurt. Please remember that love doesn't hurt. You don't need a man in your life that's going to continue to beat you down and misuse you and mistreat you. God can supply all of your needs. You got to have enough guts to say, I'm not doing this anymore. Abuse is not okay. It's not okay for a man, and it's not okay for a woman. Okay? I'm going to tell you. I'm going to give you a testimony. I'm going to give you a testimony about, uh, uh, um, uh, I, I'm not going to tell you who the person is because, you know, I, I didn't get permission to say it. But I'm going to tell you this. A family member was dating someone. This person was a narciss narcissist. This person would beat them, would call them names, do all kinds of stuff, try to destroy them, and and, and just just beat their 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 uh um just tear their their you know just tear them down. Just don't want them to be nothing. Their self esteem, beat their self esteem down. Okay, the first time was a few black eyes, a few black eyes, a few punches, a few slaps. Second time, stabbing in the head, just stabbing, stabbing in the head, got caught. Thank God the police was on, on the way. They caught him, stopped that. The relationship should have stopped then. When, 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 someone, when someone begins to hit you or beat you, they're not going to stop. If they hit you one time, you best believe it's going to be a two, a three, a four, a five, as long as you allow it. I'm just going to tell you. So then the, the last time this dude 
beat the person, beat this person up so bad, broke every bone in her, in her face, and then threw her out in the middle of the freeway and left her there to die. But guess what? She didn't die. Okay? She didn't die. But she could have died because she wouldn't take heed of being around a narcissist who wants to have control and wants to be manipulative because you don't be somebody you love. So they went to the hospital. They, they you know, somebody found her in, on the freeway somewhere. They found her. They took her to the hospital and everything and stuff. The man is in jail now. But all I'm saying is don't put yourself in these situations. There are so many people out here that will love on you. You don't have to be with somebody that beats you. Oh, I can't. I don't have no money. You better figure out a way. Or you, or we gonna, pick, we gonna have a bag. We gonna put you in a, a, a white bag and zip you up because that's what's gonna happen if you don't, if you keep allowing a narcissistic person to keep treating you the way they treat you or an abusive person. Abuse is not okay. So I just wanted to give you that testimony. Because abuse is not okay. I've been through that too. I know it's not okay. I know now it's not okay. I didn't know at the time. At the time I thought I was in love, but I wasn't in love. It might have to have been lust because love doesn't do that to you. I just want to tell you women and you men, God said he loves you. Please. If God takes you out of a relationship or moves you from a relationship, t trust me, he has a reason for it. He has a reason for it. You may not understand why he moved the person or took the person out of your life, but let him take them out your life because there is something hidden somewhere where it's going to come later on. And if God tells you no about a relationship or a man or a woman that you with, you need to listen to God. If God say no, no, don't be with that person. No, you shouldn't be with that person. Then don't be with that person. Because why? Because if you be with that person and things go bad, you're going to, you're going to suffer the consequences. God got somebody for everybody. Hold on and be patient. You might meet that person. You get to know that person. A lot of times, you know how people get to know each other? In the, in the bed. They have sex and then all of a sudden, oh, this is my husband. I'm going to be with him forever. That is not true. You just, you just emotionally attached yourself to someone that may not be in your life for two weeks. Stay holy for God is holy. Stay holy for God is holy. Stay holy. Don't compromise. Don't compromise your salvation. Don't compromise your soul. And don't compromise yourself. Don't compromise. You don't have to. You don't have to. So, okay. Love you guys. Now I'm going to tell you what God wants me to pray over you guys. A blessing, a blessing, a blessing. He wants to bless each and every one of you that are on here. And each one of you that are on here, I thank you for staying and listening. God wants to bless us. Okay, so I'm going to read what 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 the scripture that God gave me. Uh, okay, so okay, so whatever you decree and declare shall be done in Jesus' name. Whatever you decree and declare shall be done in Jesus' name. I'm gonna just let that sink in for a minute. Whatever you decree and declare shall be done in Jesus' name. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. A closed mouth is closed destiny. A closed mouth is closed destiny. As a believer, your mouth is your weapon for deliverance. It is your weapon for change. It is your weapon for supernatural turnarounds. Jesus said anything you don't want, use your mouth to cast it out. Matthew 17, 20. Mark 11, 22 and 24. You must learn to decree what you want and reject everything you don't want in your life. Our declarations of faith will always be honored and confirmed by God. Everything we bind on earth and bind in heaven, everything we loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Therefore, today we shall be decreeing blessings over your life. You shall be decreeing fruitfulness over your life. You shall be decreeing all kinds of blessings over your life. They shall be established in Jesus' name. This decree and declare prayer points shall bring supernatural transformation to your life, spiritually, physically, in Jesus' name. 
Father, I thank you for your empower, empowering your empowering me with divine authority in Jesus name. I decree that before the end of this year, my God shall show up in my life in Jesus name. I decree that before the end of this year, all my concerns shall turn to testimonies in Jesus name. I decree that before the end of this year, my destiny helpers shall remember remember you for good in Jesus name. I decree before the end of this year, every closed doors of blessings shall be open for you in Jesus name. I decree that before the end of this year, all your secret tears shall turn to open joy in Jesus name. I decree before the end of this year that every limitations in your life shall be broken in Jesus name. I decree that before the end of this year, everyone that pity me shall begin over again. I guess it was supposed, I was supposed to, I was supposed to, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not done. Call him. He called me. I decree. I'm not done y'all. We're going to get blessed today. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. I, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I decree that before the end of this year, every married woman believing God for the fruit of the womb shall be pregnant in Jesus' name. I decree that before the end of this year, every jobless member of one looking for a better job here shall get the, their dream job in the name of Jesus. I decree that the God I serve shall crown you with all round favor this year in Jesus' name. I decree that this, this our our prayers for today. None of these prayers shall fall to the ground. All of them shall come to pass in your life in Jesus' name. I decree that enough is enough of poverty in your life today in Jesus' name. I decree that even, uh, I'm sorry, I decree enough is enough of sickness, disease in your life today in Jesus' name. I decree that enough is enough of for failure in your life in Jesus' name. I decree that enough is enough of disappointments in your life today in Jesus' name. I decree that enough is enough of backwardness in your life today in Jesus' name. I decree that enough is enough of marital problems in the life of those that are married in Jesus' name. I decree that enough is enough of marital frustrations in the life of those that are married today in Jesus' name. I decree that enough is enough of terminal disease disease in your life is done today in Jesus name. I decree that every, I decree enough is enough of ancestral problems in your life today. I, de I decree and declare enough is enough of demonic operations in your life today. Demonic operations that's coming to still kill and destroy the things that God has promised you and blessed you with is going to die today. <clears throat> I decree that enough is enough of barren, barren, barrenness in your life today. I decree that enough is enough of miscarriages in your life today. There are people that want, be, that want to have children and can't. We bind that spirit today. Enough is enough. We decree that enough is enough of ups and downs in your life today. Ups and downs. You're up today. You're down tomorrow. We decree today because you have power in your mouth to decree today that it's over with. No more. I decree that whatsoever is not of God in, in your life today, enough is enough of it now in Jesus' name, depart. I decree that you are blessed today. You are blessed today. You are blessed going in. You are blessed going out. You're the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. Everything that you put your hands to shall be blessed. I am now a new creation. I belong now to the family of God. Therefore, I declare my instant deliverance in the name of Jesus. Every force pulling me backwards from my family is destroyed in the name of Jesus. Every pattern repeating itself in my life, I decree and declare the end to it now in Jesus' name. Every evil pattern, poverty, repeating in my life comes to an end in Jesus' name. I declare, declare to you now, you shall not suffer for the sins of your fathers. In the name of Jesus, you shall not suffer. You shall not suffer for your the, for suffer for the sins of your ancestor. For today I discount, I disconnect myself from all evil covenant made by my parents in Jesus' name. From today I disconnect myself from every evil covenant made at the day of my birth in Jesus' name. From today I disconnect myself from every evil pronouncement made over my life from birth in Jesus' name. I declare my deliverance from every evil that 
declaration of my life from childhood to in Jesus' name. And I wash myself clean by the blood of Jesus tonight in Jesus' name. I soak myself clean by the blood of Jesus. I decree that I am free tonight in Jesus' name. So, this is what God told me to do today. After I talked to you guys about the narcissism, he told me to decree this. And if you want to know where to find this decree, I, I, will, I will post it on my page and you can find this decree. But we should be decreeing this every day because life and death is in a part of your tongue. And if you speak life, that's what you're going to get. And if you speak death, that's what you're going to get. And whenever you don't have money in your pocket, I swear, please stop saying you're poor. Because if that's what you can, you're going to keep saying that, that's exactly what you're going to get. Because ain't nobody poor. God is not poor. And if you belong to him and he's living in you, he's not poor. He's not poor. He's building and making you so you can receive what he has for you. So, I really don't have anything else. That's all I have. That's what he gave me. I hope you got something. I hope this blessed you. I hope this decrees, you know, you continue to speak these decrees over yourself. Because just like the, just like the scriptures, if you study the scriptures every day, and you keep speaking the word of God every day. When the enemy comes and you speak the word of God, then he has to back off. But if, if, if you don't know the word of God and then the enemy comes and you want to talk your own language, you want to get frustrated and then get mad and start yelling and screaming because I know I've done that. I've been there, done that. So uh, when you start doing that, what's that, what's that going to do? That's not going to do nothing. That's not going to move the, the devil. The devil's not going to. Satan is not moved by that. He's moved by the word of God. If you belong to God and you have the Holy Spirit, then the word of God should be in you. We should spend more time in the word than we do in, on Facebook. But some of us spend way too much time on Facebook. No, I'm dead serious. I'm talking to myself too because I'm on Facebook a lot. But seriously, I mean, we really need to get in the word of God because we're going to need his word. Some people are really good with the word and they can memorize the word and they just know the word like that. I'm not one of them. So I need to read the word. I need to read it over and over again so I can get it in me. So if the word is in you, then the word's going to come out of you, right? So when the enemy comes and the word is in you, what do you do? You pray the word against the enemy. We need to stop complaining and stop complaining about what we don't have because God already set everything in plan. Everything is already planned from the beginning of time, from the time that you were born to the time you die. If God told you you're going to be a multimillionaire, he's going to do that. He's going to give you, he's going to give you ideas and things to do to get there. Ain't no money, ain't no bag of money going to drop at your doorstep. So, you know, I've, God has given me visions of barrels of money, but I know that those barrels of money just not going to come to my door and just drop there. I know that he's going to give me wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and give me uh, a creative, uh, creative things to do to get that money. It's not just going to come just because he showed it to me. So when God shows you things like that, ask him, what does he want you to do to make that come to a manifestation? Because it has to manifest. And it's not going to manifest just by you just saying, oh, I, I had a dream. <laughs> Martin Luther King had a dream too. So we got to get it together. We got to get it together. We all smart. We all got things to do. And stop using excuses like, oh, oh I don't have the money to, to get started. You better get, if you got, if you don't, okay, if you got stuff in your house and God gave you something to do, I, I, I say get that, use that. And put that out. And as you begin to put that out, then God will begin to send the people to bless you with the money that you need to make it happen even more. People have very great ideas that they don't use because they feel like, oh, I, I don't have the money. Okay, well, just like a book. If you're going to write a book, you got to start somewhere, right? Write a book. You start off with a book. Then you go forward from there. And you, God will bless you with the, the things that you need to get it out. We got too many excuses. We're working nine to fives. Killing ourselves. And then, guess what? When you go to work and, and they have that pink slip, because, you know, they can do whatever they want to do. We need to be self-sufficient. We need to be having our own stuff. We need to be having our own stuff. We really do. We really need to have our own stuff, you know? Y'all know that I have a business, uh, FES. You know that I, I, I help people uh, fix their credit, and, and I'm doing that so they can get, you know, credit. But, you know, everybody got an excuse. They got shoes to buy. They got bills to pay and all of this and that. And their credit is bad. They can't buy nothing. They can't do nothing. They can't even get a loan. With your credit, you, when you got bad credit, you can't even get a loan. Where are you going to get a loan at? You can't even get a loan. If your credit is below 500, they're not giving you nothing. Nothing. 
Nothing. Even if your credit is five something, they still gonna complain. Do you, your credit gotta be 600, 700 over in order for people to, to wanna do something for you. But the problem is we don't wanna do nothing to get it. We, we complain because we gotta pay a dollar, uh, less than a, a, a cup of coffee a day to get our credit fixed. $268 or $298 for three months to get your credit fixed. We don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. We want to make excuses. But I'm I, 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 I going to say this. You guys need to really consider getting your credit together. Stop making excuses. Stop waiting on God. And, and I need this and I need that. And God is giving you the, he's giving you the stuff to do to get it. But you don't want to do it. He's not going to come knocking on your door. And he's not going to send somebody at your door for to, to get it. You're going to have to go out here and get it. You're going to have to work to get it. You're going to have to work. And I don't mean work for other people. You know, if you do have to work for other people, do that. But don't stay there. If God told you you were a millionaire, then, then, then do the, 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 take the steps that you need to be that. You know, because what we offer at our, our at FES, we offer budgeting, credit restoration, credit builder, credit attorneys, credit monitoring, debt payoff, identity monitor, life insurance, we financial lockbox, net worth. We, uh, we, we, we have all of these saving goals, will and trust. We have a shopping boss where you can actually shop and get discounts. And we have all kinds of stuff, but, you know, a $89 is too much. That's what we say. But if you go see a pair of shoes that's $200, you go hurry up and buy that. And, and your credit is what, $400? Okay. I mean, I'm just going to throw it out there. I'm fixing my credit. I'm trying to get my credit together because I know God wants me to have lands and houses and he wants me to have nice cars. And in order for me to get that, it's gonna, I'm going to have to get my credit together. You know, and, 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 and we sit around every year and we say we're going to do it and we don't do it. Please don't let 2021 go by and your credit is still below 500. Please, please do yourself a favor. Get your credit right so you can get the house that you want and the car that you want and the, and the land that you want. Please, please. I'm not, I, I, I'm telling you, I'm, what I'm saying to you is I want to see you win. I want to see you win. I, that, that's why I'm saying this to you because I want to see you win. I want to see you blessed. I want to see you make it. I want to see you be a, a multimillionaire. I want to see you, you know, be, be great. You know, I, when God blesses me, if he blesses me to be in the church, I want my members to be able to be successful. I want all my members to be able to, if, if, if they need to write a $100,000 check, let them write it. If they want to go buy a $100,000 car, let them go buy it. Because you know why? Because God is not poor. We got this mentality that we are supposed to be poor. We're not supposed to be poor. Show me in the scripture where it says we're supposed to be poor. We're supposed to be poor in spirit. We're supposed to be, be humble. But where are we supposed to be poor at? Amen. So, if you want to get your credit fixed, you can go to my page. And you can click on, on my page and you can find credit repair. Get your credit repair. Get your credit repair. Because I'm telling you, we're going to need it. We're going we gonna to need good credit. We're going to need good credit. If you want to get something nice, you want to do something nice, you want to live good, you want to live, you won't need credit. Because I'm telling you, when you go buy a car and your credit is bad, your interest rate is going to be high and your, your card note is going to be a lot. It's going to be six, seven, eight hundred dollars for a car that you should be paying like two hundred dollars for. Why? Because your credit is bad. So I love you. God bless you. I hope you guys enjoyed everything today. I pray that you are blessed. I pray that God will continue to bless you. I pray God's blessing over you. I pray that he never stops blessing you. I pray that you continue to, to, to look unto him and continue to trust him, continue to love on him and seek his face on a daily basis. And, and please remember to think uh, about other people, pray for them. Um, let's not be selfish and always pray for our, our families all the time because some of us, we just want to pray for our families, but there's other families that are suffering. There are families that don't know Jesus and there are families that don't know how to pray for their families. So if God drops someone in your, in your spirit, or if you see somebody hurting, or if we even hear in the news, somebody's got COVID or something, pray for them, pray for them, pray for them. Why? Because it could be you. And if it was you, you want everybody to pray for you. So pray for them. 
Pray for them. God bless you. Amen. Love you guys. I hope to see you guys again. I'll be back when God leads me to come back. I, I just don't come on here just to just talk. I come when God leads me to come on here. God bless you. Have a good night.